see so many 13-year-old girls out here with habits bigger than mine. It's dirty, yeah, you know. But when you're sick, you do anything. And that's what these kids don't realize. When you get into this thing, you, you tell yourself, oh, I'll be clean about it. You know, I'll always use clean rigs. I right, won't share. Right. But there's going to come a time when you are so sick and you will use anything. I've drawn up water out of sewer puddles, you know. As a heroin addict, I barely escaped prison and death. You know, I wish you young people would listen to me. You see, my uncle's generation tried to warn my generation about the dangers of drugs. The sad fact is I went ahead and used them anyway, not caring. I guess my excuse was is that they didn't know what they were talking about. They'd never tried drugs, so how would they know? But if I could tell you a few things in this film as you watch it, Perhaps you'll make the choice not to use them. I started when I was 16 and I got a habit and then some of my friends came into town so I left town, you know, to get away from it. They helped me kick. When I got back up here, I was strung out again. I got strung out in Portland and uh, it sucks. I hate it. You know, every day you have to wake up worrying about if you have a piece to do in the morning or if you have $15 to the cops get well. And if you don't get well, you can barely get out of bed. You're, you're throwing up. Uh, heroin makes you constipated, so when you're dope sick, you have diarrhea constantly. You're puking, you're, you're sweating, but you're, you're cold as hell. I mean, I'm alive, yeah, I don't like, I don't really, I mean, I kind of feel uncomfortable like talking to you right now. <laughs> yeah. If no heroin is taken, the symptoms increase and become worse. I'm desperate right now. I was like shitting on myself this morning just a couple hours ago. Another thing common among heroin addicts are abscesses, which are caused by bacteria on the skin. They can range from a small red spot to a cyst the size of a softball. If left untreated, they can cause loss of limbs, and in extreme cases, even death. I gotta do it this way because it kept falling off. It's stuffed now. Oh yeah, packed with... Packed yeah, with packed with gauze, yeah, because mm -hmm. it was too deep. So I gotta do it that way. My arm was swollen out to here. Mm -hmm. um, about three days ago, I had to go to the hospital. I had, um, 101 temperature, my pulse was 123, couldn't walk, couldn't eat, nothing, I was throwing up, it I literally made me doctor. sick. I wish I'd seen you guys before I went to the doctors, you guys could have seen the hole inside of my arm, how big it was, because I went to the doctors and they filled it today, but the hospital had took it out and said it didn't need to be filled, but it did really, right. but... Yeah, because it would close over and it won't heal inside. Right. So clean you, all that crap out of there. Yeah, you gotta clean it every day. Take antibiotics four times a day. Mm -hmm. You can see my arm still like bruised up from it. And it was it was a vein. It wasn't from missing or anything. It was a vein. It's just from the dope being so dirty Ooh, nowadays. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah. In people who use subcutaneous routes, they almost always have skin abscesses and infections. And those infections can gain access to the bloodstream, cause sepsis and death. Sepsis is a severe, life-threatening illness in which the bloodstream is overwhelmed by bacteria. With sepsis, blood pressure drops, resulting in shock. Major organs and systems, including the kidneys, liver, lungs, and central nervous system, stop functioning normally. A change in mental status may be the earliest signs of sepsis coming on. What you're seeing on this young man is an advanced case of cellulitis uh, and he uh, hadn't gotten it treated and it got really bad. 
another common place for abscesses in the posterior. An addict since I've been, uh, oh, a heroin addict since I've been 17. I've been doing drugs since I was 12. Don't ever do it. Don't ever put a needle in your arm. I thought I could only do it once, but it's not true. Just stay away from it. Lying in a dope house, I was paralyzed from my waist down and couldn't urinate for about three days. Upon arrival at the hospital, I was diagnosed with sepsis and kidney failure. With impending loss of life, I also had two major abscesses that required opening and draining in the operating room. After surgery and several days in ICU, I began a three-month stay in the hospital recovering. This included extensive wound care on the wound vac system and subsequent skin grafts to close the massive wounds on my shoulder and thigh. As you can see here, uh, Larry has just have, had the bandages taken off of his wounds here. You can really see the um, muscle tissue. Yeah. You can see it's like up to a half inch deep. Uh, I guess it was deeper before, but it's starting to heal out. So you can see uh, you know, how much skin had to be um, taken away. Uh, that's, and here's the spot here. Um, you can see it's in a couple of spots here. Um, the deep one there, and uh, sure appreciate you uh, letting me do this. I think it's important for you know the, the heroin addicts and, and people that get these abscesses to come in right away. I wanted to explain the situation on my leg here. These. Uh, three smaller holes are actually incisions uh, the surgeon had made for drainage and they come out from that larger cavity uh, like a pinwheel. Uh, the larger cavity was where the original abscess was. Uh, the yellow tubing you see are, uh, these are called penrose drains and they help drain that. Uh, the original abscess actually extended from the top of my knee up into my hip area and the doctor had said there was a liter of pus that flowed out of there when he made that incision. Deep vein thrombosis, or DVT, also known as blood clots, usually form in the lower legs. This is common among IV drug users. Besides there being any impurities, black tar heroin has the consistency of molasses, even when diluted with water, it is a very gnarly substance entering the circulatory system. Pulmonary emboli, or PE, are when the clots move up the vein into the lungs. This can be life-threatening. The common treatment for DVT is an oral medication called Coumadin, which is an anticoagulant and thins out the blood. Heparin is an IV form when hospitalization is necessary. I developed blood clots in my legs, which led to a condition called pulmonary emboli. This is where the clots move from the legs up into the lungs. I came very close to death. I have a permanent device in my body called a vena cava filter to ensure no future clots move into my heart or lungs. Uh, in your circumstance, you were lucky. The, uh, the clots were small, and they resulted in your becoming short of breath. But they could have equally been larger and uh, caused your immediate and sudden death. That certainly does occur. Um, endocarditis is a common complication in chronic intravenous drug abusers. And the reason for that is that the drug that's being injected is not sterile. Um, when that occurs, uh, what is actually taking place is that foreign material is circulating through the 
bloodstream and finds um, the valves of the heart to be susceptible to infection. Uh, the infection takes root on the valves of the heart, more commonly on the right side of the heart, the, the part of the heart that feeds the lungs, then on the left side, the part that feeds the body. And those vegetations uh, will grow, and they can break loose, causing uh, pulmonary um, infarctions or, or areas of the lungs to die, or they can break loose if on the left side and cause strokes or um, uh, infarctions to other vital organs of the body. I can barely talk, as you can tell. My name is Tiffany. I used to be a friend of Ed's until he died. I am a friend of Paul's and I did a lot of drugs. I've been doing drugs since I was 14 years old. Ended up with endocarditis. That's an infection of your heart. We did two open heart surgeries. We have had six strokes. These lots of nasty scars. Very bad for you, let me tell you. Lucky be alive. In Tiffany's case, they actually used part of a pig's heart to repair her damaged valve and other uh, tissues in her heart uh, due to her extreme case of endocarditis. It is a common complication of, um, of intravenous drug abuse to get endocarditis, and it is a life threatening event. Uh, if aggressively medically treated, the majority of people with endocarditis will survive the episode. If not medically treated because they're continuing to get high or medical treatment is not sought, it is a uniformly fatal process. Needle sharing behavior, not the drug heroin, but through needle sharing behavior, that HIV disease could be passed along and there were serious both community as well as personal health consequences as a result of, of spreading HIV infection. In the 90s and, and into 2000, uh, it's also clear that needle sharing behavior is a vector for the spread of hepatitis C. Hepatitis, type B and C are the most common among addicts from sharing needles. Hepatitis C is a viral disease that leads to swelling, that is, inflammation of the liver. Many people who are infected with the hepatitis C virus do not have any symptoms. If the infection has been present for many years, the liver may be permanently scarred, a condition called cirrhosis. One of the symptoms that could occur with hepatitis C infection is jaundice. That is a yellowing of the skin or eyeballs. Uh, there is no cure for hepatitis C at this time, uh, but in some cases medications can suppress the virus for a long period of time and people do quite well. Although I shared needles with individuals who were known to have hepatitis C uh, or even HIV, I had never uh, contracted either virus. Uh, it's quite a miracle. When you use heroin, there's also the ongoing possibility of overdosing. One time when I injected some heroin, I left the room and went to enter another room, but I didn't make it. All I realized was I woke up and realized I had blacked out. Addicts call this falling out. I was fortunate. Most addicts die with the needle still in their arm. There are many factors concerning overdosing, all having the same results, death. A small piece of heroin about the size of a pea cut in half is enough to bring certain death to a first time IV heroin user. You see the user doesn't realize they've taken too much until it's too late. If you happen to live long enough for an aid car like this one to come and rescue you, what they can do is they can shoot a drug into you called Narcon, which is a, a reversal of the effects of heroin. But I wouldn't rely on this shallow insurance policy. I want to let you in on a little secret. There's a strange behavior amongst heroin addicts, and that is if someone overdoses, there's a, a rule, and that is either the other addicts will try to revive you or they'll just leave you for dead. The reason for this is most addicts don't want to call 911, and that is because the police come along on those calls, and no addict wants to face the police. So, even if it means someone dies, 
they won't call. The only thing preventing me from falling out was my friend next to me who's been a junkie for like two years. He fell out, went unconscious, started turning blue, was dying on us. And two of the guys that were with us took off running because if you get, if you call the cops for someone OODing, the cops will stop you and you'll get in trouble too for being around and doing dope and whatnot. But uh, we ended up reviving them, which was really scary. And I have about, probably about 12 friends every four months die because of it, either because of whatever's cutting it or if we're doing too much. If they, you know, stop doing it for a couple of days and then they go back to doing it, they shouldn't do the same amount, you know. And in Washington, we have a law about controlled substance homicide. In that circumstance, uh, I may personally um, wish to see the circumstances of the scene and travel to the scene before the body is actually removed. When we arrived, I met the school teacher that made this 911 call. It was late summer, and she was there getting ready for the first week in school. Had she not been there, and had not these paramedics known what to do, this man would have died from a heroin overdose. Uh, people who die of opiate overdoses can die a number of ways. They can die not from the opiate itself, but from an anaphylactic-like reaction to something um, foreign in the drug itself. They can die because the concentration of heroin in what they're injecting is different than what their body is used to. Or they can die from complications of the effect of the drug itself either from respiratory depression or from anesthesia to the person drowning in their own secretions, um, unable to clear their airway while the respiratory centers of the brain are dysfunctional due to the use of the drug. If you're still not convinced, come on, I want to show you the end of most heroin addicts. Listen, listen, it's up to you to make the choice. Your parents, your teachers, nor anyone else can do it for you. If you decide to use heroin, remember, heroin is stronger than ever before in our country. Many people, mostly teenagers, are dying from just snorting or smoking it for the first time. If you want to marry the dragon, be prepared to welcome all his relatives of destruction.